You're watching the special coverage of the RBI credit policy. The Reserve Bank of India has chosen to keep policy rates unchanged. Status quo on the CRR as well. More importantly, it, will, it has said that it will reverse or roll back some of those liquidity tightening measures that have, been, that have taken place in the past couple of weeks once the rupee stabilizes. Where will the rupee stabilize? That's a million dollar question. Partha Bhattacharya, Deputy CEO Mekalai, uh, also joins us on this conversation. Also with us is K.R. Bharat of Advent Advisors, uh, P. Srinivas of Bank of Baroda. Bharat, I want to kick off the conversation about the revival of the investment cycle. Every corporate that we talked to ex was expecting interest rates to actually go down so that some sort of kicker can happen and you can see a revival in the investment cycle. That looks very unlikely right now. Uh, how are you reading this? Are you expecting uh, fresh capital investments to take place at all? Well, if the situation doesn't change in terms of further announcements or, or policy action, then I don't expect anything to change because, you know, we all know what the current situation is. But if one sort of uh, hears the statements that have been coming out of Delhi over the last couple of days, in fact, the Prime Minister made a comment even yesterday saying you can expect some firm action over the next one month, then, of course, you know, depending on what those uh, uh, policy actions are, we may expect something to happen. But I think, you know, as the RBI governor very succinctly pointed out, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be impossible for him to cut interest rates when uh, the situation doesn't warrant it. When everything else, you know, you can call it dilemma, you can call it trilemma, you can call it whatever MI you want, but when, when every single factor is against uh, him cutting these exchange rates. I mean, he's pointed to the current account deficit, he's alluded to the fiscal deficit, he's talking about inflation which hasn't fully come under control yet, and remember, once the food security bill gets uh, implemented, uh, there's going to be further uh, pressure, shall we say, on the fiscal uh, situation. So you've got, all, and, and you've got the external situation which, which he talked about. So when you've got all these factors ranged against you, to expect that he can cut interest rates and single-handedly uh, sort of put the economy back on track, I think is expecting a bit too much. In fact, what all of us must realize, as, as the governor sort of tried to point out without using the dreaded S word, is you know simply cutting uh, interest rates in an environment like this could lead to stagflation. And, and, and basically what he's saying is unless the investment cycle gets, uh, you know, something happens to it, uh, you bring inflation under control, you, you take concrete policy action to address the problems that you have on, on the current account deficit, it's going to be impossible for him to single-handedly do what all of us seem to want him to do. And, and, and that's the message, and that's the underlying message that I get from, uh, uh, from this policy, and that is also the silver lining uh, for me, which is that, you know, here you have a, a fairly independent uh, RBI governor who's saying, look, you know, I will do what I have to do, provided the... the uh, uh, in the situation is right, not simply because, you know, 20,000 people are going to be putting pressure on me. Mr. Srinivas, uh, Abhijit from Delhi, uh, you know, yesterday uh, we had uh, the SBI chairman, uh, no less, speaking to Bloomberg TV India in an exclusive chat with Harsha and telling us that, well, he doesn't agree with uh, the liquidity tightening measures. He believes this is effective monetary tightening, CRR hike by stealth, and rather he would have wanted a more transparent policy. Why don't you just hike rates? Why don't you just hike, uh, hike CRR? Uh, my point to you is effectively this is tightening. Effectively it has increased your costs. Would you have rather the RBI not do it this way and allow, the, because their stated policy is not to defend any particular rate of exchange. So would you have, uh, uh, rather the RBI allow the exchange rate to depreciate, find its own level, and the banks not, not to be saddled with a higher interest rate cost, which they cannot pass on anyway because it's a slowdown period for the economy. Would you prefer the RBI to go down that route? No, no. What exactly here we should understand is the time and the timing. Reserve Bank of India is of the opinion that rupee depreciation happened not just only because of the external and other factors, but also because of a kind of speculation that has been taken place. Because of that view, Reserve Bank of India has taken all these steps so as to curtail any kind of positions being taken and to take advantage of the rupee depreciation so that uh, this type of speculation will further hamper. With that view, this type of uh, liquidity constraint squeeze or whatever you say has taken. Changing of a CRR is a, in a way, it gives a much bad signal or a wrong signal for a long term than a temporary measure of this. In a way, what exactly happened is the CRR increased indirectly by around 20 to 25 basis points. So the impact may be the same. But for the Reserve Bank of India to roll back 
as today also in the speech rbi governor has said in a prudential manner in a step wise this is a right step because they can now take step after step once the speculation goes out and once they are confident rupee is only demand driven not to speculate and driven partha bhattacharya of mekla also joins in on this conversation partha we've seen there is a bank uh, articulate its concerns over the currency and the measures that have been taken in the past couple of weeks what do you think are the factors that will define where the currency is headed uh see let's look at i totally agree with my earlier speaker uh, the panelist that uh, rbi this high voltage action taken by rbi over the last two weeks a series of actions are basically on the premises that there are speculating speculation which is driving rupee down i am not totally agreeing with that i don't think speculation was one of the minor factors but major factors which rbi governor talks about has talked about it earlier also are external factors and over which there is no easy solution current account imbalances to be corrected good goal how do you do it how long does it take it's a very very difficult job it's not easy for any government to also set it right very quickly there is no quick fix so i mean there are potholes on the policy pathway like in mumbai roads uh, or, or i think all over the country and all the cities there are huge number of potholes on the policy pathway those needs to be fixed and there is again it can't be a patchwork it has to be a solid concretizing and that takes time i am not sure whether government has the ability or intent to do such things excepting these uh, statements by finance minister and prime ministers we have not seen serious action there so these underlying fundamental problems of current account imbalance remains on top of it because of the global factor which also is highlighted by governor because of the global factors like qe tapering and market perception of liquidity tightening globally the withdrawal of funds by fiis from mostly triggered by uh, bond from the bond market to start with and now this month it is 3 billion dollar down 1 billion from stock market 2 billion from bond market those factors are difficult to be sorted out quickly and let's look at the action the broad action that rbi has taken hard focused on two two three things one is that monetary tightening uh, liquidity tightening which everybody has talked about has limited again that can take the speculative froth out but nothing beyond that and the fundamental problems remain number 2 liberalization of ecb norms and by government the fdi norms those things will have a huge lag effect the dollar flow funds do not flow in just because you open the door the guests need to feel comfortable to walk into your house just because i have opened the door doesn't mean that people will walk in sure. so that we have to see how the market part the overseas investors look at india and with elections looming uh, next year i am not too sure how many investors will look to india as a uh, long term destination sure. number 3 step uh, the another major step that they have taken on the gold gold import for front hike the in import duty by government and restrictions on credit availability for gold import etc again you are trying to look at the constraining the side, supply side sure the demand side has come down in this quarter we have to see how the in the festive season how the demand side of gold uh, picks up whether it picks up or not and sure. in that case if we constrain the supply side there may unintended result may be to take it to an unregulated unauthorized uh, market point taken sir well, closing comments uh, bharat you know the point that uh, bartha was making about investors uh, how are global investors feeling about india right now do you think we are on the step where at least some of the investor confidence is being built back or are we not on track absolutely not in fact uh, you know when you speak to investors today uh, the level of confidence that they have in india pretty much mirrors the level of confidence that that indian industry is showing which is look you know unless to do something to improve the investment climate is going to be difficult for us mm. which is the indian investor uh, indian uh, industries mm. and and the the foreigners are saying the same thing sort right. out your red tape uh, you know please give us consistency of policy you know give us clearances quickly mm. and, and you know 
get rid of this policy paralysis. I mean, and they're saying pretty much what we are saying as well. Maybe they're a little more candid because uh, uh, maybe some of us find it a little more difficult to be, to be candid. But the, the sentiment is exactly the same. Sure. The sentiment is worsening and it's, it's, the sentiment is in line with your GDP growth rate. Mm -hmm. As growth slows, sentiment is going to get more and more adversely impacted. So we need to get our act together. And I think that is the takeaway from this RBA policy as well, where, he's, where the governor is clearly saying, look, let's get our act together and I will then do what you guys want me to do. On that not so optimistic note, uh, gentlemen, we'll have to leave it there. Many thanks for joining us with your perspective, K.R. Bharat, Partha Bhattacharya, P. Srinivas. That was the panelist's yeah. view on the Reserve Bank of India's policy, which has been maintained at status quo. More importantly, the tone of the policy has been less hawkish than was expected, and it has hinted at a rollback of the liquidity tightening measures once the rupee stabilized.